Hi folks and welcome to Deb's Trick of Tricks of the Trade. And today we are going to be doing the show grooming for English Springer Spaniels. And um, this is one of my past dogs and certainly one of my very favorites. And this is Connor. And he was the number one English Springer Spaniel in the country in 2007 and the runner up in 2006 to the legendary and great James, who went best in show at Westminster in 2006. And I am very happy to say that we were for the only and the first award of merit directly behind James that year when he went best in show. So both of these dogs are stellar, they were wonderful. And um, after their careers as show dogs, they both went into therapy work. So how cool is that? Which just demonstrates the proper temperament for an English Springer Spaniel, but that is a whole nother series of tapes. So today we're gonna to be doing show grooming for the English Springer Spaniel. I don't care how great you are, how many years you've been doing this, get a picture like this that shows this underline and this whole presentation of a show Springer. Put it up on the wall where you can constantly be referring to it as you groom. I have this on my wall when I groom, and I've been doing this like since the time of dirt, okay? So, and actually for those of you who have bought any part of my DVD series, you have gotten a nice little laminated picture of Connor so that you can do this outline, all right? Which is very pet, very cosmetic. It came into our breed a number of years ago. I'm not a fan, but here we are, you know, so we have to do it. All right, so that's the most important thing. All right, so I'm gonna put that back up here on my wall. And when I groom a show Springer, it is on my wall. Okay, so um, here is Carson. And um, Carson is a champion, he's a finished dog. So when he goes back to the dog shows, he's in the best of breed class which we call a special, meaning that he's special. Yes, because he's a boy and all the boys are special. But um, he's not a special in the real sense. I consider a specials dog, you hear this terminology all the time. What is a specials dog? A specials dog is a dog that's a champion or grand champion or Pluto champion or whatever the hell they have going these days with the AKC. And those are the dogs that are campaigned all throughout the year to get into the final standings of the year, whether it's top 10 male, top 10 female. That to me is a specials dog. And then after their big show career is over, they, they all, most of them come back and have like a veterans career where they go to all the major specialties and they go in the veterans class. And many times they go best to breed from the veterans classes. You know, especially if you've got a judge judging two, three hundred springers over the course of two or three days, whatever dog is going to win best of breed that day, that two or three hundred can bump that dog up to the number one springer spot and nobody else can catch him for the rest of the year. So a lot of judges don't want to do that. Unless they have a pony in the game, they would rather take the safe side, pull out this beautiful, I mean, drop dead gorgeous, well-known veterans dog. Everybody's crying ringside and everybody's clapping and they put that one up to best to breed. How nice. And then the number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten Springer, which are in the ring, all get selects and award of merits after. Easy out. And besides, who doesn't love to see the veterans go best to breed? So um, most of them, like I say, do come back and then quote unquote have a veterans career. So that's what a specials dog is. Somebody who's actually competing. And it's not unlike NASCAR. Um, for, for, for those of you who are rednecks and shop at Walmart like me. So in NASCAR, you win, you win a race. How you place, you get points. Same thing here. For every Springer Spaniel that a specials dog beats in competition, they're awarded one point. So if there are 12 Springers entered and they go best to breed, they've now gotten 11 points minus themselves. Then if they place in the sporting group and there's 500 dogs in the sporting group that day, then they get 499 points. If they go best in show and there's 2,000 dogs at that dog show, then they get 1,999 points. So they accumulate the points over the course of the year. And for our national parent club, number one Springer, the real number one Springer of the year, which is done by 
done by our National Parent Club here in the United States. That is based on breed points only. Um, then the magazines came in and they had to sell magazines. So they started doing all these awards for top sporting dog and top dog in the country. And when I started, there was no such thing. You were either the National Parent Club Dog of the Year or runner up, or you were, or that was it. That was it. So it's kind of like Santa Claus on the Macy's, the, the Macy's Day Parade. And then suddenly for the Coca-Cola, for the Coca-Cola float. That was the first time Santa Claus ever existed. Now suddenly Santa Claus is Christmas. You know, I don't know what happened to Jesus' birth and that whole formula, but we don't seem to, at least a lot of us don't do that anymore. All right, so, um, so that's a little bit of history on specialing a dog. Right, so Carson was trimmed to look beautiful for our March specialty, March 15th. Um, which was at the York Fairgrounds and oh god I'm so happy to say that we were able to finish our five-day event and then the that Sunday morning at 1 a.m. is when the governor shut down the state of Pennsylvania to all these big large get-togethers so and I, we were probably the last specialty club to have a specialty this year yeah right so for me and so at least we had that so we are all looking forward to having specialties again in the fall or whenever, whenever it's safe to do so. So here we have Carson. He has not been groomed since those shows. I do not recommend this. If you want to show your dog after he's in show coat, okay? And even it, like now, during this furlough, whatever you want to call it, Unless you want to do that F blade trip with the top coat, which I showed in one of my videos a little while ago, you've got to maintain you've got to maintain maintain these show coats. He has to have a bath and he has to be cream rinsed once a month, once a week. He, he this dog should be wearing his towel like every day, and I constantly fuss with Neil about this. He has a very wavy coat, and for the show ring, we want it flat. Yes, dear. Yes. So this is a dog that I would really have him live in a towel. Um, but he was bathed this morning, so his coat's way too wavy, so we're going to have to discuss that and what we need to do with that, because that's, so we'll see. All right. And Carson finished with, um, specialty majors, so he, he is a bit of a rah-rah dog. So here we go. I have shown feet and toenails five million times. Um, I'm not sure if I want to go through all that again. So maybe I'll just start with the face. Okay, let's start with the head. And because my videographer's son is back in Pittsburgh, you guys are just gonna have to deal with me fooling around with the two cameras. And, we and again, because I have the two cameras, you're gonna be able to see it from two views. So look for the widescreen and the live feed version of these of these videos and if you see that then watch both especially toweling i did that the other day with toweling nine blade nine blade um on a show springer the only thing i'm going to use is a nine blade a seven f seven f blade and my trusty wah that's it that's all you need for a show springer so i'm just going to go through i'm not going to stop and talk in between each of these steps because then I'm going to have like a two hour tape and I don't want that. I am going to be downloading my original series Tricks of the Trade where I do that. I go through each step and I show you exactly what to do step by step by step by step. And since I already have that, there's no need for me to do that here today and I will get them streaming soon, I promise. So this is a nine, and when I did the whiskers, I didn't push. I'm not pushing it all. I'm just kind of skirting over the top. And you see this? Whenever you use a clipper, you want to have a flat, smooth surface. Dogs are round. So what I'm doing here, you don't want to go like this. You will cut the lips. These things are nasty. Pull it out. Now, what do I have here? A flat, smooth surface. And, and you sure don't want to go over that two or three times. It's like the pad and foot. Do it once and get out. Right. Now, with the grain, 
I'm going to start up here. When you're using the clipper, do one, don't go chop, 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 chop. Every time you stop this clipper, it's going to leave a clipper mark. Nasty. And whenever you use a clipper, it's like an airplane. You're going to come on like an airplane and off like an airplane. You're not going to start here, stop there. On like an airplane, off like an airplane. So if I want to groom here, I'm staring here with my eyes. But yet my hand is up here coming on like an airplane. So by the time I get to that place, it is fully in contact and then I come off. Very important. So tight, flat skin, on like an airplane, off like an airplane when you do your clipper work. So I'm just going to start up here. And I'm kind of got it angled to where I'm not even clippering yet because this is normal hair. Why do I need to clipper it? Oh, okay. I guess I got to show everybody this. Okay, here's the breastbone. It's a nice little breastbone on a springer. So you take three fingers. Three, remember those magic fingers? I showed you that on toweling. You take three fingers, okay? And there is the spot. I'm resting on top. There's the spot where you're going to stop, where you're going to create that pearl neckline. The pearl neckline for the boy. Okay, so we're going to go down. Ah, ah. And if they move, start over. And off like an airplane. On like an airplane. Off like an airplane. Airplane on, airplane off. I'm exaggerating this on purpose to show you what I am doing. If I were just grooming this dog in real time and not doing a training video, you would probably have to watch it in slow motion to actually see all my hand gestures. Because after 50 years, I am like super, super, super quick at this. Alrighty, now, another big question. How far back do I go? Well, if you look at the way the normal hair, and this dog just had a bath this morning, which is bad, you need to trim this dog after he wears his towel for 24 hours. But we'll just live with it today. Okay, so here's the ear. This is very simple. There's the bottom of the ear, right there. Okay, there's your line. Boop. It's also, this hair is growing this direction, and this hair is growing this direction, so it kind of, kind, kind of makes a natural peak. So some dogs have that peak, some don't. This dog really does. So at the bottom of the ear, straight down. There's your line. All right, now, <laughs> I have to stop. Okay, now, every single dog in the world has, look at your dog here. Open it up. They have this crazy wild doohickey flap. They all have it, okay? More people cut that or cut that off when they're trimming than I'd like to say. It's horrible. I mean, that, that's really a wicked, nasty spot, okay, to be grooming around. So, what do we do? I'm trying to give the right angle here, okay? So, whenever you're working around the head or the ear, okay, you are going to know, oh, oh, Carson, Jeez, what, a, what a baby, Neil, what a baby. All right, All right you're going to know where that is. You're going to know where that spot is. You're going to know it. You're going to stop. You're going to think about it. And when you can, you're going to have your hand pinching that. Okay, I know where it is. I have it tucked away under my magic finger. Okay. You guys have been watching me trim girls, and girl springers are not the big babies that boy springers are. So, all right, sad but true, if you're gonna do a show trim, the dog's gotta be standing, at least for most parts. Make sure I got. Let me pull this camera up a little bit. Yeah, you guys are actually okay. All right, so, so right under the ear, and and then off like an airplane. Well, since I'm up here, again, where's that flap? I've got it pinched in my fingers. I have that flap pinched in my fingers. Now, here's your next line. Okay, 
the corner of the eye to the corner of the ear. There's, there's the ear right there. And then there's the eye. And it was from here down that made that line. So right there's your next line. This is a nine blade. And again, okay. Now here, oh God, this is half hour groom is going to take me two freaking hours. Anyway, so what I've done is I've taken this ear over here and I'm holding both of these ears together. So that's how I'm getting this ear out of my way. And oh, a lot of times when you're grooming, that's like a big part of it. How do you operate the equipment and operate the dog? And I hope everybody can see this. Anyway, corner of the ear to the corner of the eye. This is a nine blade against, against the grain. Off like an airplane. Don't go bum bum. On like an airplane, off like an airplane. On, off. On, off. And then the next line is the corner of the eye to the corner of the mouth. On, off. On, off. On, off. Done. Tip. Okay. Now we're going to go to this side. Okay. Same thing. I want to clean up this ear. Where's that flap? Know where that flap is? I've got it under my thumb. Is there a Broadway show tune for that one, Neil? Under my thumb for you. Neil's been over here all morning doing Broadway show tunes. We both love Broadway. Alright. He actually has three master's degrees in things having to do with theater and performance. There we go across there and he spent 10 years on Broadway. Trying to have an acting career, which is really cool. He's got some great, great, great stories. So on like an airplane, off like an airplane. Good boy. And if you've been watching my videos, if a dog wants to shake, I'm sorry, I let them shake. Whenever you can, I mean, there's, you know, you're at a point with the grooming where they can't shake, they can't shake. But if they can, let them shake. Okay. Right. All right. So now we've done this. We've done this. Oh, and I still got whiskers. And again, I'm just going over the top. Done. Okay. Now let's do the ear leather. So when we use a clipper, what? Flat, smooth surface. So how do we take something that looks like this and make it a flat, smooth surface? Well, we're going to use our hand. Okay? Now I've got my hand under there just like that. I'm going to put that ear right on top. Now, depending on when you are grooming this dog for the dog show, we are grooming this dog for one reason and one reason only. And that is to make an appearance in the show ring. So... Everything that you're doing at home to get this dog ready, you are thinking, well, what's this, when I'm grooming, what's this going to look like in two days, four days, five days? Because you can trim the day before, three days before, five days before. I wouldn't go more than that, but that's, you know. And again, are you grooming a black springer or a liver springer? Liver springers, you go against the grain here and they are going to grow back white or gray. And then we're into Tricks of the Trade 2 or 3, I don't know what DVD it is, where I have to show you how to dye your dog. And it's not to cover, it's just to bring the dog back to its natural color. And again, you don't go telling people you're doing this stuff because under AKC Rules of Regs, you're not supposed to do that. But you have to understand they have 300 different breeds that they have to police. And in a Newfoundland, because I, I showed some best in show Newfoundlands in my day, okay, in a Newfoundland, a black Newfoundland, if you have a white spot here, you are disqualified. You cannot show that dog, and many breeders say the dog should not be bred. If I had a dollar for every Newfoundland that's probably been dyed black here, I could retire. I wouldn't need any of Trump's checks coming to me. So, so we all do it. We all know we do it. That just is... But again, if you, the more you clipper a liver spring, springer on the ear, the more it's gonna come back gray, silver. That's where that's from, okay? Not so much with the black ones. Okay, now on this side, flat, smooth surface. Again, now I've created a flat, smooth surface. 
<laughs> well, here we go. Stop. Oh, God, this dog's going to lose it because I have him up here so long. Now, we have the ear leather here. Again, you take the clipper into that. You are going to bleed this dog. You are going to have stitches. You are going to have a vet bill. It is scary to use these clippers. So you just have to remember a flat, smooth sur surface. And don't be going like this. Okay? So I'm creating a flat surface here. Okay? Now, what's really good about this is you go this way. You go off. You go off that part of the ear flap. Don't ever go into it. Don't go this direction or this direction. I, I, I guarantee you're going to cut it. You're starting here and you're going off. Same thing on this side. Because we were trying to groom and show you on this. Okay. You go this way. You never, 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 never take your clipper and go down the front of this ear leather. You will end up cutting it. It will happen. So just make it flat and go off to the side. If you go off to the side, you will never cut the ear leather. So, I mean, that's kind of how that is. Up. Oh. Where are you, big baby? Oh, God. It's the boys. The baby boys that are babies. Up. Oh. I have no idea why I did that. All right. This is hard working two cameras with the dog. Instructions, oh dear. All right, now, we're gonna be going over this um, next week after I get him trimmed and bathed and towed properly. I'm gonna put him up here. Neil's gonna sit over there and read paragraph by paragraph the breed standard. And then I'm gonna go over this dog and explain the breed standard, but I'm doing it so that you can learn to groom your dog. Because like I always say, you have to know your breed standard. The judge is judging this dog by the breed standard. So you have to groom, you have to groom this dog by the breed, breed standard, not by what you think looks good or looks pretty. We have a breed standard. So we're gonna be doing that next week. So here is the moderate stop. For me, I never take a clipper in here. But I use this as my plane on, and the eyebrows, you never, 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 never trim them, never. This big, high, arched eyebrow stays. The clipper never touches those. So, now, too many live cords here. So, I'm not even touching that hair. I'm just starting. Now, I start to go back. I am not touching that hair, and I just slowly go back. I slowly go back. Now, what do you do with the back of the skull? Is that flat or smooth? No. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our thumb and we're gonna pull that up. So now it actually, it's resting on the skull, the flat skull of the dog. So that's another thing you would never, never, never do. You never wanna take your clipper down into there because it's, it's just gonna look messy. You're gonna have clipper marks. It's gonna be gross and ugly and all that good stuff. No, ever so lightly, I'm just gonna feather that in. A lot of clipper work, especially in a show springer, is sculpting, not flat out. You're just gonna put the clipper on like you do a sheep in the spring and take all the wool off, or like I have to do with a lot of pets. On like an airplane, off like an airplane. And again, for that area, I'm gonna pull it forward. I'm just gonna do this ear quickly without starting, stopping, starting, stopping. Oh, pull the camera over here. Okay, again, flat. I'm going off the side. Put the front of that ear leather. I've got my hand under here to make it flat. I'm actually pushing against my flat hand. Again, off to the side. You don't do that, please. You will cut your dog. Okay, where's that funny flap? I know where it is. My finger is on that funny flap. I know where that funny flap is all the time. 
every second I am at this dog's head with this clipper in my hand, I know where that bunny flap is. You have to be aware of it. Totally and completely. Or you will cut it. I know. It's just miserable I beat you. I know. Alright. Now, under the ear. The judge isn't going to see this, so you can go against the grain. I kind of like to because it, it makes the ear fall flatter up against the body of the dog. And that's always a nice thing to do. And nobody sees it anyway, so get that cruddy stuff out of there. Okay? All right. So there's your natural flap that appears. Now I'm going to go ahead and finish my little U shape here. On like an airplane, off like an airplane. On like an airplane, off like an airplane. For me, I do not like to see a defined line there. To me, that is pet grooming, not show grooming. Where's that funny flap? I've got it pinched in my fingers. So, everything on a show springer haircut should quote unquote make the dog look natural. Okay, well, his ears are perfect, Neil. Good job. I know he keeps, he keeps shaking, but there's nothing in his ears. There's nothing wrong. Okay, bear with me here. i got to get some hair out of the way. See what I'm doing? I know. Um, Carson literally is used to me probably doing this in about a half an hour, but here we are. Okay, now, <laughs> let me see if I can get... Now, here's the front of that ear flap. Now, what do I do? Now, do you see how... I just have that, okay? I have a hold of it. I know where the ear leather is in there. Now, I'm gonna take these double ducks and reverse them. This is the normal way. Now, by reversing them, this becomes my straight edge shear. And again, if you can do it in one stroke rather than the da 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 Right, so now, I left a lot of hair, on, not a lot, but there's still some hair there. I didn't go skin tight, but when you're looking at the ear, you don't know that. I mean, you know, you don't want to go skin, skin. Neil, stop! <coughs> Neil! Oh, okay. Stop! Now you get up and you start walking around, he's looking at you and... Bad daddy, bad. Get the dog trained, then I gotta train the freaking owner. All right, so here we go. So, I know where the ear leather is. I'm going to go in front of it and create that line. In front of it. And there we go. Look how pretty. All right, so there you have that. There you have that. How pretty. How pretty. Okay. Now, my trusty $5 shears when I bought them on sale, and now they're 12 Okay. All right. So these are my thinning shears. Now, there certainly is a, a little bit, tiny little bit of a mark there of where the clip, where I didn't clipper this stop out. So on top of the hair, and with these thinning shears, you just want to do one or two strokes at a time. Everybody see what I'm doing here? And you're not going to thin this way. You're going to take the blade of the scissor needs to follow the grain of the coat. That means the direction that the coat is growing. You don't do this. Okay. Now, for... All you Sherlock Holmes types, if you want to get out your little spy glasses and put this up on your TV set and look at it, you would have seen a fairly significant mark where I started my clipper work there, which of course you don't want in the show ring, but it's gone. And again, I wouldn't do this the day before and show him. I would be doing this, I don't know, three, four days in advance. So even if there's the slightest bit 
it's going to grow in and blend. All right. Now, from the occiput, it's the other thing. Know the parts and pieces of your dog. And that's part of learning the breed standard. This little bone that's here. Okay, from here down to the shoulder blades. Here are the shoulder blades. Behind the shoulder blades. From here to here to the elbow and up makes a triangle, right? A triangle. I call that the Bermuda Triangle. <laughs> because it is. That is the most difficult part of the dog to trim. And that is the part that everybody gets in trouble with, mainly because they over trim it. So we are gonna do that last, and I may even have to do it tomorrow after I've toweled him, because this is like way too curly to do a whole lot with. Uh, but we'll see how the day goes on. But that's the Bermuda Triangle. I don't care if I'm doing Connor, Kira, that's the last place I go. And uh, especially for anybody that's just learning to groom, that would absolutely be the last place to go. All right, so let's troll him around here. All right, one of the few times I'm going to use a clipper on a show trim. And that's all this gnarly hair. And again, be careful. There is an anus back there. I'm not pushing up against the skin, especially when I first start. I mean, the worst thing in the world is to get too close with your clipper up against any of the anus skin. I mean, the poor dogs, they really do suffer when you do that. Now, here is a 7F blade. This dog's got way too much coat, but I will deal with it. Okay, 7F blade. And again, I'm sculpturing. I'm not pushing down. I'm going to start to get off to March, April, May, two months of hair growth. Which again, if you're going to keep, and I can do the edges. If you're going to keep a dog like this that's in specials coat, I mean, he certainly is. Right? Anybody got a million dollars that wasn't in the stock market and you want to back a nice dog? He would definitely be in the top ten. Anyway, so, um, I, no. I mean, when I had Connor in show coat, he was bathed every week and groomed pretty much every seven to ten days. Like, I was putting him in the show ring. And that's the downside of keeping a dog in specials coat. It's that it's extremely time consuming. And if anybody who knows Connor, when I retired him from the show ring and wanted to get his hunting titles on him, I, my sister calls it the Swip It Trim. That's where we take a 10 or 15 blade and we go over every square inch of the dog. So they look like a whippet, a Swip It. So when Connor was hunting, he was in a Swip It, especially when I was training him. My God. Uh, and then I had to decide, do I want to go another year and a half to get his senior hunter title and the reason for that is because we don't have a lot of um, hunt tests so to get four qualifying legs it could take you a year especially with me I like to go to certain clubs where my friends are you're right and then you have to get a gunner and you have to keep the birds and you have to keep training or grow his coat out so he can come back as a veteran and have a veterans career in the show ring and at that time then they were offering grand championships so I said well I'll do a grand championship on him so that's what I did Okay, because really the only difference between a junior hunter and a senior hunter is that the senior hunter is well trained in obedience. It's very obedient to what you are doing. A junior hunter can kind of be crazy and all over the place and show natural ability. Senior hunters got to be under control, right? And they do a hunt dead, which by the way is the easiest thing to train for of all the things in hunting. That is, the, it, it's an obedience skill. It's not a natural hunting skill. So because it's an obedience skill, it is super, super, super easy to teach. And we will get into that. So, and as soon as your dog understands picking up a bird or a dummy is fun and bringing it back to you from that day forward, you can start to teach them the hunt dead. So by the time you have your junior hunter, you should, um, they should already know they're hunt dead. But again, that's another day in another video. You guys write to me. I see, I see Susan Tosco, but then you cover it up and I can't see where my camera is. 
I love you all, but then when you write to me, I can't see. All right. You know, I hope everybody is safe. I don't know what the numbers that we're having right now. I hope that, that none of you have had a family member to succumb to this, especially a lonely one in a nursing home. These are horror stories. Horror stories. This is, this is a plague. And this isn't just a virus. This is like the bubotic plague and smallpox plagues and Spanish flu plagues. This is a plague. And it's just, it's horrible. All right, but we have our dogs to play with. So, well, now I am going to go back to the Bermuda Triangle. Just because on him, that's the next place I want to go. Um, I don't really have an order in which I groom a dog. I probably do, but it's not something I'm even aware of. And normally when I trim, I'm certainly not going through this ordeal of fooling with cameras and trying to give instructions while I do it. So here's my 7F blade. No, I'm gonna go this, I'm gonna go on top of that peak of hair. I am sculpting. I am not pushing down with the 7F blade. On like an airplane, off like an airplane. On off. On off. Here's the rule of thumb when you're working with a clipper. Anything you can groom with a clipper, use the clipper. Because the clipper is going to give a better finish than anything you could do with your hands. Right? So now, and everything's about blending. So now I'm going to take this seven blade and I'm going to blend that short with that top there. Oh boy. Probably need a really good camera person to show all you guys what I'm doing here, but. Ah. Okay. So. I'm holding the ear, and I'm just going to blend. That was a nine blade. Just blend that at an angle up. Then here, take this ear. Now I am going to do this. I'm pushing there. Because again, I want this ear leather to fall flat up against this dog's body. Nobody sees that. The judge will never see that. Nobody sees that. Okay. Now. Here's this line again. Oopsie. Okay. Down and off like an airplane. Off like an airplane. I'm coming straight down off this dog. Straight down off this dog. Ay, 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 ay. This is like not so trying to work these cameras and then show you guys what I'm doing too. Okay, I know Carson, I'm gonna make it completely crazy having you up like this. But such as being a movie star. Those are the pains. And if I could ever learn to use this tripod. Oh. Yeah, for some of these it would be nice to have my son, but oh well. You and I will make do. Okay. So, I don't know how to do this with the camera. I don't know. Maybe I should have Neil over here doing the camera. Yeah, Neil, come on over here. I, I won't do it with my friends on Facebook because they can watch this. No, no, no. This one. The big one. Over here. Just walk behind here. Okay. Oh, say hi, Neil. Okay. Now, take this camera and go up and go like that. Right there. Got it? Okay. So, you guys will have to watch the widescreen version. Okay. Now, again, I am not pushing against the skin. I'm just taking this 7F blade, which I love dearly, and I am just going over the top as if I was sculpting. That's it. 
Okay, now come in here like that. Okay. Now I'm going to keep doing that same technique with the seven blade, and I'm not pushing up against the skin here. I'm just kind of going over the top of the coat and blending it all in together. Ah, I know he's getting. Okay. He says, "Ah, uh, Deb, you usually do me in a half an hour, and then I'm back running the yard." Okay. So, let's put it down. Now, I am going to disconnect both and then come right back on so I'm not like doing four hour videos. Okay, so I'll be right back with Deb's Tricks of the Trade. <laughs>